So if you guys follow me on social media at all, you guys have probably noticed I made a brand new camera purchase recently. And a lot of you have been asking me why I got this camera. Is it for video? What, you know, what the use cases are for me to use something like this in my toolkit as a sports creative. And if this is a camera, I would recommend you guys buy. And to be honest, no, I wouldn't at all. But let me explain what camera it is and why I got it and why I don't necessarily think it's the best camera for you to get if you work in sports. But you know, the biggest reason as to why I ended up purchasing it anyways. What's going on guys, Juan back here today with a brand new video and as always very excited to sit down here with you guys or stand as I'm currently standing up here with you guys to talk about more sports creative content. If you guys are new here, welcome. My name is Juan. I'm a 25 year old sports content creator living in Toronto, Ontario. I work full time in the sports world and this channel is basically where I hang out, talk to you guys about creating sports content, the camera and gear that I use, what I'd recommend you guys to buy, tips and tricks. If that sounds like something you guys like, please hang around, consider subscribing and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video today. So after months of debating it, really asking myself if this is a purchase I needed to make, if I really wanted to spend the money on this camera, I finally bit the bullet. I ended up purchasing a Fujifilm X100V camera and right away you can tell that this is very much not the kind of camera you'd expect me to have. I'm primarily a video shooter and I shoot sports and athletics as my main career. So this camera really doesn't fit within either of those two niches. So I'm about to explain why I got this camera and where it's gonna fit within my creative repertoire. And there's a lot of reasons why I wouldn't say that this is a conventional camera for someone like me. This is probably not a purchase a lot of people expected me to make. And if you guys aren't familiar with Fujifilm or their camera lineup, this is the X100V. This has been one of the most popular cameras in Fujifilm's smaller mirrorless lineup for over the last year. So I think it's been out for almost two or three years now, but I've really seen it boom on popularity on social and online over the last year. And after seeing the images that come out of this camera, after seeing what this little thing can do, I was immediately sold on eventually getting one of these. And I got really lucky over the last few weeks, I saw one on sale at limited stock when it was at Henry's. And I put my order in at like eight in the morning. I didn't think twice about it. I was, you know, kind of said, it. if I don't get it now, I'm never gonna get it. And I'm glad I did because a lot of people I know who want this camera are still on waiting lists. I just got incredibly lucky in getting my hands on one of these guys. So the X100V is an APS-C sensor camera. It is primarily for photos. And the unique thing about it is that it has a 28 millimeter fixed focal length. You cannot change the lens on this. You cannot put anything else to change the 28 millimeter focal length. And that makes it a really unique camera to use. It also does shoot video, it shoots 4K. I'm pretty sure if I hook this up to a Ninja, it can do up to 4K, 10-bit, 422 footage. Um, it can shoot in log, but not really the selling point of this camera is the video specs of it. It really isn't anything to write home about. Realistically, the biggest reason I bought this is for photography and I'm about to get into that. And I know I haven't talked about photography on this channel, so this might come to a surprise for a lot of people, or this might be something that I end up talking more about as I dive further into the photography world within sports. So obviously I'm not going to be using this for video at all. And that's going to be surprising considering all the content on my channel up until this point has been video focused, but that 28 millimeter focal length doesn't really give you a lot in terms of being able to be flexible as a videography camera. And also there's no image stabilization on this camera as well, pretty much making handheld shooting on this null and void. The reason I bought this camera was for photography and what this camera does do very well in that aspect is document and capturing moments, which is a really big thing in my style of content creation and within my creative workflow. And to be honest, before that, I generally avoided it in the past because it was a little bit intimidating I didn't think I was very good at it, but I knew at some point I wanted to practice it. I wanted to get better at it in order to add it to my creative repertoire into the list of services and things that I can offer a team or organization when capturing content in the sports world. So over the last year, I've kind of gotten into the habit of carrying a second camera with me just to snap some photos during games, during events. And honestly, I've had a lot of fun with it. I never really thought I would enjoy it this much. And it's just been really fun to, you know, have a second camera in place and, you know, during a stoppage in play or during a specific time in the game just switch to my photo camera snap a few photos and i've been really happy with the results and the growth i've been seeing from myself in that aspect and i feel like i really got into the swing of things with sports photography during the stanley cup final in june when i was in denver and tampa and i think it was mostly because a i had to do it part of my job when i was on site was not just to capture video content but photo as well 
but I also felt like I had a really good opportunity to capture some really unique things. And so I took that and I just ran with it, having a second camera on me, snapping photos during warm up, snapping photos in between games. And even when the Avalanche did win the Stanley Cup, I had some amazing opportunities to be on the ice and not just take video of the celebration, but photos. And these are some of my favorite images ever. Just that entire month of shooting photo and video has to be some of my favorite content that I've ever captured my entire life, including a lot of those photos. However, I quickly realized that carrying two cameras on me was kind of a tough situation, depending on the lenses I had on those cameras, depending on how much I had to move around. It just really wasn't working for me. It was very cumbersome. I was always worried you know, if one of them was gonna hit something when it was dangling off my arm or, you know, where, where I had to put the other one down to take photos or take videos. It was just a lot to deal with and it wasn't really something I enjoyed at the time. At the same time as starting to get into the sports photography world, I also got into the film photography kind of space and I absolutely love shooting film. I love the way it comes out in camera, the way that it just distinguishes itself so much from its digital counterparts. There's nothing like shooting a roll of film, not knowing what's on it, and then just getting it developed and seeing it all come out. You know, maybe how you thought it would, maybe even better than you thought it would. There's just some magic about shooting film, but the only downside to shooting film is that it is incredibly expensive to develop and scan and even though i carried one during the stanley cup finals and i've had one for work events and different things over the last few months i have noticed it just does get progressively more expensive to keep up with shooting film a lot and I think the X100V fits perfectly right now into my creative workflow and takes away from a lot of the issues I just mentioned I had, you know, with carrying two cameras and film being expensive, you know, this camera bridges a lot of those things being, oh, sorry, I just fired a shot. This camera bridges so many of those things. It's small, it's compact. The images it takes are stunning. And honestly, I have not been motivated or challenged by a piece of gear so much as I have been with this camera. Even though it's only been two weeks, I've been so motivated to go out and shoot with this thing and it has been challenging it has been fun and that's all you can really ask out of your camera gear is for it to be fun to make content creation fun again and to also motivate you and challenge you to do different things and that's exactly what this camera has done for me so the things I really like about this lens in general, the size, first of all, it is a very small compact camera. It is not much bigger than your iPhone typically. Let me try and show you guys that. iPhone is, you know, a couple of in inches longer. You could pretty much fit this camera in your pocket, which I really like the portability of it. It's not gonna weigh you down a lot and I need that. I need something that is gonna be light on me. It's not gonna weigh me down and it's not gonna get in the way of you know me shooting video or me doing my day-to-day -day when I'm shooting an event. The second thing I really like about this camera is the colors and the images that come out of it are stunning, but primarily because Fuji actually allows you to do film simulations directly within the camera. So what that means is that you can actually tweak the settings within the camera to emulate your favorite kind of film look or different looks in general. So you can shoot something that looks very similar to Portrait 400 or Kodak Gold or whatever your favorite film stock is and it actually burns it straight into the JPEG coming out of this camera. So I shoot JPEG and RAW. So when I shoot that, I actually get two photos. I get one unedited one that I can throw in Lightroom later, but I actually have one that gets edited straight in camera. Don't have to tweak it. It already has a specific look to it. And I honestly find myself using those a lot. And the cool part also about that is that I can just transfer it straight out the camera onto my phone without any issues right away. And that does wonders for my creative workflow, especially when I'm capturing content on site and I have to turn stuff over and send it over to get published quickly. That is a game saver just to be able to have an image that looks great straight out of camera. Unbelievable feature that honestly, I don't know how I live without as a photographer up until this point. Now, during the time of recording this video, I have not used it in a sports setting yet. Maybe by the time I edit this, I have, but I'm really excited to see what I can use this for during a sporting event, whether that's taking photos during pregame and warm up, you know, little candid moments with teams and athletes in a locker room or after a big win, and maybe even see how it handles shooting at a wide angle, you know, some in game action. I am very excited to see how I'm able to create with this camera despite its limitations in my own realm, which is sports. I think I've mentioned it on the channel in the past but when it comes to videography and filmmaking my content style is very fly on the wall documentary-esque I like to stand in the back I don't like to get involved I just want to capture things as they happened and I think that this camera lends itself to the same application when it comes to photography the look and feel of the photos that come out of this camera really blend itself to being a behind the scenes a documentary style camera so I'm really excited to see how this fits into my creative repertoire when I'm at a basketball game or a hockey game or a volleyball game and 
capturing action, but also the little moments in between, you know, players celebrating after a big play or a coach talking to the player on the bench, things like that, I think would be really cool to capture with a camera of this size and of this style. I do think though that the biggest reason as to why I'm so excited and why I'm enjoying this camera so much is because it really forces me to think different when I'm shooting photos and when I'm trying to capture a moment. The fixed lens is arguably the biggest limitation and the biggest challenge, but also one of the biggest benefits to this camera. I can't necessarily get a close up of an athlete like I would with a 70 to 200 or a 28 to 75. So I'm forced to think on my feet, move around, find a different angle, or even challenge myself to step out of my comfort zone and get a little closer to get the shot I'm looking for. And I have not had a piece of gear challenge me like that in a long, long time. As someone who's just starting to grow as a photographer in the creative world, this idea of being challenged and motivated and pushed to do different things is incredibly exciting, especially because I love innovating. I love trying to capture things in new and unique ways. And this camera forces me to do just that. And I think as a and I think as a creative, you can't ask for anything more than a piece of gear that gets you excited to create content on a daily basis. And to be honest, I don't think there's been a day since getting this camera where I don't leave home without it. In even the most mundane everyday tasks, I still carry this with me trying to see what I can create. I've used it when going on a simple walk or maybe getting a coffee or hanging out with friends just to see the real world use applications because not only am I gonna use this for my sports creative work, but I wanna use this as a piece of gear that I can use to capture memories and just document my everyday life in a new and unique way. One of my favorite experiences I've already had with this camera wasn't even anything close to sports related. I was just shooting during my best friend's surprise birthday party and I was amazed at how well these photos came out and the emotion and the moments it was able to capture and also how quickly I was able to just to get it to my phone and give it to my friends that night with the film simulations baked in. There are so many benefits to having a camera like this on you even if it isn't for a work thing and I think that's the one thing I really appreciate about it. It is truly a camera that I think I can use every single day and not get bored of. That being said, I'm very curious and very excited to see how I can use this camera when shooting and creating in the sports realm, whether that's shooting for the NHL or maybe creating content on the freelance side of things. You know, I'm very excited to see how I overcome the challenges with this camera in those situations. And hopefully this camera will make me a better sports creative in general down the line. Now, I wanna make it clear, this is not a video for me telling you to buy the X100V. I honestly would probably not even recommend most people get it, especially if you shoot video or if you're just getting into the sports photography and video world because it is the exact opposite of what you need to capture content in this space. The reason I'm making this video is because I want to share with you guys why I bought it and the use cases I hope to create with it. I also wanted to share a little bit about my sports photography journey up until this point because like I said, it's something I'm still growing into something I'm still getting used to, but this is eventually something I do want to talk about more at length on my channel. And I figured this is a great opportunity to kickstart that and to just also share my growth with you guys, because, you know, I'm still growing, I'm still learning, and I'm excited to have a piece of gear that's forcing me to grow and learn at the same time. I also wanted to say that it's important for you to challenge yourself. It's important for you to step out of your comfort zone as a creative, especially in the sports world. I love innovating. I love finding new ways of creating and capturing moments and telling stories. And, you know, I'm not saying you have to go buy a camera and do that, but don't be afraid to try new things and step outside of your comfort zone. Like for me, photos are definitely out of my comfort zone and having a camera with no changeable lens is definitely out of my comfort zone. But I just wanted to share that, you know, by doing this, I feel like I'm gonna be a better sports creative down the line because I'm pushing myself to grow. I'm pushing myself to do different things. And at the end of the day, growth and progress is the biggest thing I'm striving for in my creative career. And I'm very excited to see how how my growth and my creative development change over the next you know couple months weeks years by using this camera if you guys have made it up to this point of the video thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch me ramble on about camera gear and sports creative work but it really does mean a lot to me leave me down a comment below if you guys are interested in knowing more about sports photography if you guys are already into it any questions you might have I'd be happy to answer them and help out, maybe make more future videos on this subject. If you guys enjoyed today's video, if you guys took anything away from it, as always, please consider liking it to help me in the algorithm and also consider subscribing as it really would help me and the channel grow and I would truly, truly appreciate it. And that does it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.